Welcome to a quick overview of our onboarding for child mode. This is for an Android device or a child Android device. I'll cover pretty much the whole setup, the typical steps that we have in our uh, app onboarding, and then you'll be on your way. So first things first, um, I've already installed the app. In my case, I've installed it from our website. A little bit more on that in the description below. But for now, let's get started. So this version is the latest from our December 2019 release. A uh, quick recap on all the features we have, including uh, now we're filtering the Chrome browser as part of our uh, offering. And then the parent mode is also quite powerful. So I highly recommend you install this on your Android parent device. Uh, the iOS parent device more or less has a similar feature set. And best of all, parent mode is actually free for parents to use. Child mode is not. That's where we do all the magic. So here I'm going to actually log into an existing group. But if you're starting out new right now with Boomerang, you want to tap I'm new and then follow the same steps I'm about to go through. Here I want to control this device. So this is the actual child device I'm setting up. If I was setting up a parent device, I would tap on manage family devices, enter an email and password, and either create my group or log into it. So for this video, I'm going to be controlling this device because this is a child device. And then here you'll notice a few permissions that we're going to require to get a successful setup on this uh, phone, um, including some of the um, calls and text message uh, safety features. Tap on next and here you get uh, the typical prompt for permission requests from Android. So here we just allow all these. Uh, an important one coming up here is in Android 10, uh, Google's made it so that you can also allow location only when the app is open. Please don't do that or else the location tracking will not work on your child's Android 10 device. Uh, not many of those out there yet, but it's coming. So uh, best to know and be aware that you want to tap on all, allow all the time. And then SMS, yes. Once we uh, uh, get these permissions done, these are the typical app permissions. Then we get into a little bit more of the advanced stuff. So here we're looking for the accessibility permissions. Sometimes this is called a service. Um, so you may have to tap on services, then go to the next screen. But here we're on this device. I'm right in the right in the, pretty much at the top of the screen. Tap on that, enable it, and allow it. And then you'll get kicked back into our app. If you don't get kicked back into our app, just tap the back button and it will continue. Device administrator, quite important to protect our app. So please do accept that. Here um, we activate it. And once that's activated, we're back into the app. And then we have some special permissions here for app blocking we have to enable. Uh, this allows us to have our block screen uh, be on top of everything. App user stats, this is for the uh, timers and data on app usage. All right, so that's the last permission. Now we get into the actual setup. So we're trying to make this as fast as possible. All of these settings can be tweaked and edited after the fact via parent mode. So I'm going to go through these as default settings. Uh, for now, but you can, as you can see here, you can update these as you wish. In my case, I'll leave them default um, and then go tap next on the device limit. Then we have the schedule. So what are the schedules you want for weekdays and weekends? And again, you can make this on a daily basis. If you want to have a schedule that's different every single day, edit that via parent mode. Tap next. This is a very cool feature that we have. So encouraged items uh, primarily focuses on the apps that are installed already on your child's device. You can pick the apps that are already on your child's device that you don't want them to count down the time. Typical apps that we recommend here are education-based, maybe a reading app, maybe a music app, uh, or even maybe like a health-related app. But games and YouTube and Netflix, not recommended to be added to this list. Also, since this is a smartphone, I can actually add contacts, uh, so numbers that I can call anytime. And again, you can edit these numbers after the fact via parent mode. All right, tap on next. Here, this is a new thing from December 2019. We have until this point only filtered the internet or the web browsing via our own SpinSafe browser. Now we've added filtering to Chrome browser. So this is automatically set up. You don't have to do anything. We take care of it right away. So now we no longer block Chrome as part of our app blocking features. We allow it and we filter it right away. And here are additional features that we by default enable and you can review these and enable them or disable them. Again, most parents leave these on because these are part of our feature set that's quite valuable for uh, monitoring your child's device. Top one being the monitor, the YouTube app, uh, new app approvals, and of course our smartphone safety features. All right, so the last one here before we get into logging in or creating your group is one that we've added recently where we add a little extra protection against our app being removed easily. So most Android apps, you can just hold tap and uninstall right from there or drag to the top of the screen. With this, you cannot. So we actually protect an area 
in Android that makes it very difficult to remove our app. And on most devices, impossible to remove unless you do a factory restore, which at that point you're losing anything anyway. So it's not very uh, a very po you know great step to use. So I recommend you keep this on. You can always toggle this on or off from parent mode as well. Okay, so that's another thing we allow you to do is tweak some of these settings as well, more advanced settings from parent mode. All right, tap next, and now we're going to log into our group. Up to you if you want to use a child's age. The idea we have uh, for this is that we want to be able to provide recommendations at some point based on apps that we should detect during onboarding. But that's still far off, so up to you if you want to add your child's age. It's not required. All right, so now I tap log in. A little bit of a confirmation. Make sure that you got the right email or else you'll get an error. Uh, tap on yes. Now we're going to connect to the server. So this device now has been onboarded and paired to your group. Or if you just created a group, the group is not created. All right, so I tap continue and you're done. So now you've onboarded Boomerang on your child's device.